Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show you all the different grips for every shot in tennis. And before I show you the grips, it's very important that you hold the tennis racket correctly. So what you must do is hold the racket with a gap between your pointer finger and your middle finger. There needs to be a gap here. And also the end of the racket needs to be on the inside of your hand. The advanced tennis players uh, develop a callus in here. Uh, but if you're a newcomer to tennis, uh, this might be a little bit uncomfortable at first, but you will get used to it and your hand will get used to it. The pinky finger is gonna be very close to the edge. Now the reason why this is very important is that the wrist is a lot more mobile in this position of the hand. If I held the racket too tight, my fingers close together, uh, the wrist would feel locked in and I wouldn't be able to adjust my racket accordingly. The only exception to this way of holding the racket would be a one-handed backhand where the fingers are gonna be a little bit closer together. Now the reason for this is that if you think about all the strokes, the hand is always behind the racket. So if we take a serve, the hand is behind the racket, uh, giving more stability to the racket. On the forehand, it's the same thing. Uh, on the forehand volley, it's the same thing. On the two-handed backhand, we have the other hand giving stability. But if we hold the racket, on the one-handed backhand, there's really nothing behind the racket. Now, if I held the racket in this same position, uh, this wouldn't provide enough stability, and there's a chance that the racket might go backwards if I make contact with the ball. But the fascinating thing about the grips is that high-level players do not always know what these grips are called, the names that I'm about to give you. Uh, these players are completely operating on feel and the memory of the hand in relation to the grip. These players have been using certain grips for certain shots for so long that this muscle memory is so deeply ingrained into their game that making a shot with the wrong grip would be absolutely impossible and they wouldn't be able to control the ball. So they immediately know when they're have their hand in the wrong position. Does this mean that you shouldn't care about the grip either? No, it doesn't mean that because at the beginner level, players are most comfortable hitting the ball like this, whether it's a serve or a forehand or a backhand, they're kind of holding the racket like a frying pan. And this happens to be the Eastern forehand grip. And the longer you play all your shots with this particular grip, it becomes very difficult to change it. And especially in the case of the backhand and the serve, you must use the correct grip if you want to have any chance uh, to improve your game. So for beginner players and for players who have used the forehand grip on the serve and many other strokes, it is of the utmost importance that you learn the continental grip. And I'm gonna show you a real easy way how to find this grip on your racket. See, every tennis racket is gonna have eight bevels. And if we count from this bevel, if we have the racket straight up uh, with the edge of the frame pointing straight up, uh, this will be bevel number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so the easiest way to find the continental grip is by going towards the second bevel. And now the way you're gonna do it is you're gonna draw something on your base knuckle. So basically if you take your base knuckle and you go right underneath there, you make a dot or an X, whatever you want. And now you simply go to the second bevel and you slide your hand down and then make sure that index finger is slightly up. And this is the easiest way to find a continental grip. A couple of tells is the wrist position. So if we take a look at the angle of the racket face, you can see it's straight up and down. Like you shouldn't be able to see the strings. And my wrist is also in a straight position. This is an indicator that you are indeed in a continental grip. And this grip is so important because it's gonna help your serve tremendously. And I recommend that even if you have used a forehand grip on your serve for a while, you must switch to a continental grip. And think about it this way. The only shot you would need to switch your grip for would be your forehand. So you can hit all your other shots with the continental grip. Uh, this goes for your volleys. This goes for drop shot, your slices, uh, your defensive lobs, your overheads, your serves, and your two-handed backhand. The only time you would ever need to switch a grip is if you hit a forehand. And players back in the day in the wooden racket era used to hit all shots, including the forehand, with a continental grip. You definitely do not want to use the continental grip. And the reason why is it puts the hand too high on the racket. See, if I just uh, simulate the contact here, you can see that my hand is on top of the racket. Now, if I wanted to make a 
vertical swing path, I would almost have to use my forearm or my wrist to make this vertical swing path happen. And therefore, I do not recommend that you hit your forehand with a continental grip. And this is how you find the eastern forehand grip. Basically, go to the third bevel and then just take your base knuckle and slide down. And what you'll notice is that the third bevel is much wider uh, than the second and the fourth bevel. And this is interesting because there's gonna be some variations uh, where players that do have an eastern forehand grip hold the racket. So you could be a little bit closer uh, towards the continental side and you can be straight in the middle or you could be close, a little bit closer uh, towards the semi-western grip. Uh, so this is the grip that has some variations within it. And this is a grip that's perfectly fine to use. It is easier to make the vertical swing path happen compared to the continental grip uh, because the hand is more behind the racket and now uh, it is more effortless to go upwards. And the semi-western forehand grip is the most commonly used grip worldwide. And it's the fourth bevel, and we do the same procedure. We slide down towards it. Now, the interesting thing about this grip is that if we put the racket uh, straight down, uh, this would be the case if we pick up the racket off the ground. And this is a very easy way uh, to find the semi-western grip. So if I place the racket on the ground like this, and I simply pick it up, I will end up in a semi-western grip. Uh, with a straight wrist position. And the big advantage of this grip is that my hand is more underneath the racket, making that vertical swing path a lot more intuitive compared uh, to the other grips. And the Western grip is gonna be on the fifth bevel. And what's interesting about this grip is that it severely closes the racket head. If we compare uh, this grip to an Eastern, you see how my uh, racket face is very open. If you imagine that I would hit a ball from the strings and if I maintain my wrist position the same, if I go over towards the semi-Western, it closes the wrist position. And now if I go one over, uh, the racket face is completely closed. So what that means is I have to turn my wrist almost flat in order to achieve a neutral racket face. So contrary to belief, this is actually a grip that's very easy on the wrist. And interestingly, a lot of juniors choose this grip. And the reason why is that the wrist is in a more neutral position. You see my wrist is in completely neutral compared to a semi-western where my wrist is extended, bent backwards, or even more so in an eastern grip where my wrist is even more extended. So on a full western grip, the wrist is straight. Now, for most players that learned to play with more conventional grips, there's gonna be an impossibility to switch to this grip because their muscle memory is not used to this position of the wrist because the moment of contact takes place so fast, muscle memory kicks in, and now all the balls end up going in the bottom of the net. But for players who have always used this grip, and this is a grip that's just fine, and there's many players on tour, including jo Novak Djokovic, who use this grip. Now I'm gonna show you how to find the best grip for your two-handed backhand. So you're gonna be in a continental grip with your dominant hand. And now with your non-dominant hand, you're gonna go towards the edge between bevels six and seven. So this would be, if you count it from the lefty way, this would be Eastern, this would be semi-Western. You wanna be in between there on the edge. This is when you wanna place your non-dominant base knuckle. And now you're gonna end up in a two-handed backhand grip that's used by the best two-handed backhands of all time, including Novak Djokovic. Now the two-handed backhand, interestingly, doesn't have as much spin as the forehand, and the grip is one of those reasons. And what happens with the vast majority of the best two-handed backhands of all time is that with this particular grip, you can see that my non-dominant hand 
is more behind the racket and this is more of an indicator uh, that is going to be a flat stroke uh, with the tip of the racket coming through this way and if you wanted to get more spin on your two-handed backhand you could try out the following grip place your dominant hand on bevel number one which happens to be the eastern backhand grip now your non-dominant hand is going to go on the edge between the western lefty which is number five and the semi western lefty which is number six that edge in between this is where your non-dominant hand goes and now if you look at the way my hands are positioned you can see that my non-dominant hand is way underneath the racket and now when it comes to that vertical swing pad that's so important when it comes to topspin uh, this is going to happen more intuitively with this grip If you have a one-handed backhand, you have three options. You could hit a one-handed backhand with a continental grip. Now, the interesting thing about this grip is if I keep my wrist straight, you can see that the racket face is slightly open. If you look from this angle, with a straight wrist, a slightly open racket face could be a big problem if you're trying to hit the ball very hard. So what I recommend, uh, the best grip for a one-handed backhand is the eastern backhand grip which is bevel number one and basically slide your base knuckle down and i remember on the one hand that you want those fingers to be a little bit closer together and now if we take a look at my hand you can see with the straight wrist position like this i have more of a neutral racket face at contact another backhand grip that very few players use on tour is the western backhand grip basically it's bevel number eight and you slide your hand down and now the interesting thing about this grip is that you can see here that if I keep my hand straight the strings are closed so this will result in more spin but the vast majority of players that try this grip will not be able to get enough net clearance and they will in fact start hitting a lot of balls into the net so the best grip for your one-handed backhand is the eastern backhand grip because with this one you can hit the ball flat you can hit it with top spin and the wrist is in a more neutral position When it comes to the serve, I only recommend the continental grip. This is probably the biggest mistake at the recreational level where players will serve with a forehand grip. And the biggest reason why serving with a forehand grip on the serve is a problem is that the wrist is going to be in an unstable position at the most important part of the serve, which is the contact with the ball. So if I take the eastern forehand grip and simulate the contact, you can see that my wrist is neutral. You see the wrist is kind of straight up and down. So if I hit the ball very hard with this particular position, and now there's a danger my wrist might move forward, which could cause injuries. But most likely what happens at the recreational level is that the players are very careful and end up massaging and pushing on the ball. And if I put my hand in a continental grip and you take a look at how my wrist is positioned in the contact, you see that the wrist is going slightly towards the right, which is a lot more stable uh, position to be in. And so what happens afterwards, even if I continue to pronate towards the outside or if I have a non-continuing pronation, the wrist is more protected. See, the wrist needs to have stability. There needs to be some tension in the wrist because you're hitting the ball with a lot of speed. In a neutral position, the wrist is most likely going to be too loose. So by going with the wrist like this, you can try this out at home. This is indeed what happens at contact. There's a lot more support and stability for the racket at the moment of contact. Now there are some players who will use an Eastern backhand grip for the serve. And this is going to be a grip that will give you more cut on the ball. And the reason why, it's gonna become very difficult to straighten the racket out. So naturally, and if I keep my wrist more neutral compared to what the wrist position would be in a continental grip, you can see that the wrist, the racket is slightly 
angle off. You can see it's not quite uh, parallel to the baseline. And now what's going to happen if I hit a ball like this with this angle of the racket face, naturally the ball it will get sliced and it's going to have a tendency to go towards the left for right-handed players. So I get a lot of questions about this particular grip, whether it produces more spin. And it does produce spin, but it's kind of happening as an accident. And you want to be able to make the spin in the real way. And so in my opinion, this grip is somewhat unnecessary. You can create more power with the Continental Grip because you're going to be in the optimal position when it comes to your wrist. And therefore, you will be able to apply the maximum racket head speed. And when it comes to slice or kick, you want to be doing this intentionally anyway. You don't want this to be happening by accident. So my recommendation to all level of players, even if you're a beginner, you have to get used to the Continental Grip. This is the best grip there is when it comes to the serve. And when it comes to drop shots, slices, or volleys, all these shots are in the same family. And all these shots will be the easiest if you hit them with the Continental Grip. And again, the reason why this is the case is the wrist position. So many recreational players will hit forehand volleys with a forehand grip. And what happens is you're going to be okay when the ball is above the level of the net. Uh, the strings are going to be naturally more closed and you're going to be able to get away with this. But as soon as the ball drops below the level of the net, now in order to open the racket face, you have to turn your wrist and put it in a very weak, unfavorable position. And most of the time, uh, this is not going to work out. And with the continental grip on the forehand volley, you are in the perfect position to create that L shape that you need on the volley. Now on a high ball, it's very easy to straighten the racket face out if you need to. And if you get a low ball, it's very natural to open the racket face up without putting the wrist in a weak state. Because where you get stability on the volley is by putting the wrist in this L shape. Now there have been some players that were slightly over towards the forehand side on the forehand volley. Players such as Boris Becker and Patrick Rafter. And interestingly, uh, they also did this on their serves. And the difference between a continental grip and an Australian grip, which is that corner between the continental and the eastern side, it's so minimal that I don't think it matters. So if you're a slightly over on that corner, you're probably going to be okay. But as soon as you start getting over towards that eastern side, uh, now you're going to be in big trouble. And when it comes to the backhand volley, again, the continental grip is going to give us the most stable wrist position because this is the most important thing on the volley. So if you take a look here in a continental grip, you can see my wrist, again, is slightly extended and this feels very solid. Now, if I go into a eastern backhand grip, you see my racket face closes now. And now if I wanted to open that racket face, I would have to flip my wrist this way. And this actually hurts. So this is a possible injury problem if you are volleying with an eastern backhand grip. If I use an eastern forehand grip on a backhand volley, this is going to be a disaster because and now my racket face is completely open and if I wanted to close it, I got to bend my wrist in a weak position like this. Now for you guys who have been playing tennis for a long time, there's a lot of muscle memory and now you're looking to change your grip. Now this might be a very difficult thing to do. And for more details uh, why this is the case, uh, check out one of my older videos uh, titled Changing Grips. If you're just getting started with tennis or you're an intermediate player, here are my recommendations. For the one-handed backhand, you should try the Eastern 
back end grip. For your forehand, anywhere in the range between Eastern, semi-Western, and even Western is going to be okay. This is going to depend on you. Sometimes your hand will shift either more towards the Western side or it's going to shift towards the Eastern side. The best way to do it is to start off with a semi-Western and then just see what happens. Your hand will find out what works best for you. But for all the other shots, whether it's your volley, your slice, your drop shot, your two-handed backhand, or the serve, you want to use the best grip there is, which is the continental grip.